Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Jazz from the Combs. Tonight, we have the Dick Ogren Trio. Dick Ogren on piano, Bob Simonelli on bass, and Mark Halovnia on drums. Right now, they're playing from this moment on the obligatory Cole Porter tune. Listen up, have a good time, and check them out.
Hi, everybody. Welcome to Jazz Speak. This is where we get a chance to talk to the artists who are with us tonight. Gig Ogren on piano, Bob Simonelli on bass, and Mark Kolovnia on drums. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, we had as a featured artist, we had um, uh, Bobby Tamagni. And Bob, in the course of the show, talked very lovingly about his relationship with Boots Masuli. You know, Boots is a legend. Everybody and our listeners in Europe, Boots Masuli is a legend in this town. Played Reed Alto with Stan Kenton, worked with the best. A couple of months later, we did a show <coughs> with Tony Lavornia. Yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with Tony Lavornia. Sure. But we spoke about our mentor at the time, Sonny Costanzo. Mm -hmm. Tonight, we dedicate the show to the memory of Emil Haddad. How many years has it been since Emil passed away? It's going to be 11, 11 in years. August, yeah. yeah. Reflect just for a moment. Tell us about the influence that Emil had on, on each of you. Dick, you go first. Well, you know, from the first second we played, well, from the first second I heard him, was like, ooh, I, I have to play with that guy. And uh, then we did get to play together, and I've said this before, but it felt like, not only putting on a glove, but it felt like putting on a golf glove and putting the Velcro on and we're set and wherever we went, we went together. Incredible. It was an incredible experience. It was yeah. a wonderful group that you guys uh, had. Yeah. T tell us about your relationship with, uh, with Emil. Well, also uh, to elaborate on what Dick had just said, uh, I used to absolutely love going out when I had a Friday or Saturday off to go hear these guys because the way they grooved together, they were like uh, like two birds just flying through space, and wherever they turned, they turned together. It yeah. was such a pleasure to listen to them. But it was a unique relationship that you guys had with uh, with Emo. Well, he was also the most uh, Im influential uh, musical person in my life. Is I got to play with him when I was twenty. Wow. So my junior and senior year of college, yeah. we were still doing like the uh, general business, sure. all the hotels and. Emil would get a gig for six months at that time, yeah. like at a Sheridan or something. And so that's how I was introduced. It was more commercial music. I played jazz with him later. Yeah. But um, general business, a lot of general business. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Mostly it's clubs, though. But yeah. he was a, a great mentor and just loved the guy. How about you, Mark? Well, I remember him, you know. He used to come down to my uncle's studio on Shrewsbury Street. So I remember him from a long time ago. Um, he and Boots, mm -hmm. um, even though Boots died in uh, 67, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, you know, my uncle and my dad were always playing, you know, every night of the week, and they'd have rehearsals, and Emu was there, and then there were other jobs, and like, you know, like Bobby said, general business gigs that we'd be doing right. um, in any of those hotels or uh, some of the clubs around town, sure. you know. And he was, he was just very warm and loving and, and, you know, had a kind word for everybody. So mm, beautiful guy. A beautiful guy. And Dick is wearing a uh, emo hat-head button. Where do you get those? Did, is that something you had made up? Yeah, there's only like three in existence. <laughs> and I was fortunate enough to uh, cool. get a hold of one. Cool. Yeah, but yesterday was his birthday, so that's why. How that's old would he have been? He would have been 93. Oh my! But uh, he didn't get that far. But he's in a he's in a great band right now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. That was a nice Cole Porter you did, by the way. I really oh, enjoyed that tune. Thanks. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Golden earrings. Where in God's name did you come up with that one? I don't know. You know, I've heard a few different jazz groups. Uh, play that tune. It's a, it's a cool tune. I tried to get the copyright year. I couldn't find it anywhere. Couldn't find it? No. Well, it's, it's a Hungarian folk song, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, Whoa! Oh. You didn't know that? Don't no, know. I didn't know that. I, I know, know that. Bob's mother knows the tune. She right? knew it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Will you agree with me that it's a Hungarian folk song? If you're going to pick folk, I would say Hungarian's a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it> sounds <laughs> good. Nice people. Nice people. <laughs> all right, we're going to listen to you guys play a couple more tunes. Born to Have It All. Pino Dinaglio. Donaggio. 
Spinaggio. Yeah. Okay. Or as Emil used to say, Pinot Grigio. <laughs> <laughs> is, is the composer a friend of yours? Uh, no, he's, he, that is the theme song from the horror movie Carrie. That, uh, the original one. The original one with Sissy Spacek. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And that, that song was floating all through the tune. How did you find it? Very pretty tune. Uh, a, a good old friend of mine, uh, we taught at Berkeley together many years ago uh, in the 70s. And uh, Jim Burt, great piano player, okay. he found it and was like, oh, well, this would be a cool tune to do. Cool. So I've <laughs> been playing it for 40 years. <laughs> Born to have it all and smoke gets in your eyes. Yeah, great tune. Right. We'll be back after these guys play some more tunes.
Hi, we're back again with Jazz Beat, talking to the guys who are playing tonight. You got Dig Ogren on piano. We got, I swear to God, Bob Simonelli. I don't know why I have trouble remembering your name. And we have Mark Olovnia on bass. Here on Jazz at the Combs. That was wait, a nice wait, you got to do that again. Yeah. What? Mark Olovnia is on drums. drums. He said he was oh, on bass. Oh, okay, all right, all right. And we're back with Jazz from the Combs. We're doing Jazz Speak right now. I'm going to talk to Dick Ogren on piano, Mark Halovnia on bass, on bums. On bums. Oh, oh, on bums. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right. Take three. Take three. All right, take three. It's all right. It's all right. Mark Halovnia on bass, oh. on drums. All right, all right. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Jazz Speak. This is where we get a chance to talk to the artists who are with us tonight. We got Dick Ogren on piano. We got Bob Simonelli on bass and Mark Kolovnia on drums. Did I get it right? Yeah, man. I got it right. <laughs> okay. All right. Listen, I want to talk about um, <clears throat> a tune that you're going to do. Uh, Bob Simonelli wrote it. You know, right? What was How was that tune born? And as a bass player, did the bass line come first? Tell us how that tune came to be. Actually, it, the bass line did come first. And I think of that tune as sort of a reverse killer Joe, mm -hmm. where it starts on C7, it goes down a whole step. Instead of going down, I went up a half step. Okay. And it's the same exact line, but instead of played with that pattern, it's with a half step up. Okay. And that's how it started. Then it I started with the bass line. Yes. How much, t tell us about the processes as far as getting the, the changes in there with the melody. Are you schooled? Do you have that type of education where you can do that? Do you have a degree in music? I do not have a degree, but I did attend Berkeley for a couple of years. As a matter of fact, that's how I met Dick. He was my teacher. Okay. So. <laughs> Way back. Do you do a lot of writing? I. Uh, as I get older and I have a little more time, I try to do more writing. But I have, I don't know, 15 or 20. Do they tunes all pretty out there. much highlight the bass? Does it start? Do they all start off with the bass line? No, no, not at all. That that just happens to be the way that particular tune okay. uh, was written. But okay. sometimes it's it's a melody. But typically, it's just, you, the whole tune just comes out for some reason. I don't know why. And other times, nothing comes out. So. That's when you stop. How long did it take for you to pen it? Well, when you, a tune like that, it, it probably came out in 15, 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Huh. All right, Dick Ogren, we're going to talk about, was it thurs Thursday afternoon? It's, well, yeah, it's Thursday afternoon, although you were right. It, it was originally Thursday afternoon. Uh, I was supposed to play golf. It rained. And uh, so I stayed home and wrote the tune. But I wrote it with Emil in mind. Oh, okay. So uh, it was Thursday it? afternoon for, you know, the tune titles, they morph. You know, they, yeah. they change. So that's what, that's what happened to that one after about a year. It was dedicated to, to the memory of Emil? No, no. This was for Emil to play, oh. and he played the daylights out of it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey. Jazz at the Combs here with the Dick Ogren trio, Dick Ogren, Bob Simonelli, and Mark Olovnia. We're going to close out the show, man. I want to thank you very much for coming down thank tonight. Thank you, Harry. It's yeah. been a great pleasure. time. Thanks. Great time. Had a ball. Thank you, guys.
We'll see you next month. In the meantime, don't forget, stay warm, be cool, and keep bopping. Thank you.